Halo 2 was a success, even though few had originally planned for Halo to have a sequel. Halo 3 was different. Well before the launch of the Xbox 360 in November of 2005, Bungie had begun laying plans to finish the fight it started four years earlier. Despite being the killer app for the original Xbox, the 360 was released with no Master Chief in sight. The first trailer for Halo 3 concluded the 2006 Microsoft E3 press conference. In it, the Chief watches a swarm of Covenant ships surround a Forerunner installation right as it prepares to fire. Marty O'Donnell recorded a new track specifically for the announcement, using a 60-piece orchestra and 24-person choir for the first time. If you'd have told me a few years ago we would be here in this place talking about this, I would have said, no way, it's not going to happen. The final installment of the Halo trilogy had a $6.5 million marketing campaign. Gameplay was first teased in Chapter 1 of a documentary series, Master Chief crashed Monday Night Football, Neil Blomkamp directed a live-action short that eventually got District 9 made, a massive yet meticulous model was built for a handful of spots reminiscing about the tragedies of this virtual conflict, and I Love Bees got a cross-media sequel called Iris. Four months ahead of launch, beta multiplayer servers went live, and more than 800,000 players jumped in. Retail copies were sold in standard, limited, and legendary editions. Over 10,000 U.S. stores held midnight launch parties to celebrate the release on September 25, 2007. Halo 3 took advantage of the Xbox 360 in many ways, adding tech like high dynamic range, global lighting, real-time shadows, depth of field effects and cutscenes, 5.1 surround sound, and a 10-mile draw distance. Halo 3, in terms of content, was the largest game in the series. Two-handed support weapons provided extra firepower, added equipment effects ranged from defensive bubbles to shield regeneration, AI drivers took the wheel for the first time, and the Covenant adapted pack mentalities and attacked in groups. Player 2 and co-op controlled the Arbiter, but this time four players could team up, filling in the ranks with two honored members of the Covenant Elite. Celebrities joined the cast, including Terrence Stamp, Nathan Fillion, and John DiMaggio. Map editing came to consoles with The Forge, named after the mode in Marathon, allowing modders to drop objects into the battlefield in real time, and up to 100 films could be stored to the 360's hard drive and replayed from any angle. These, along with screenshots and game variants, could be uploaded and tagged on Bungie.net. Halo 3 was awarded Best Multiplayer Game at the Spike TV Video Game Awards, Best Xbox 360 Online Multiplayer Game from IGN, the Edge Award for Interactive Innovation, and was Time Magazine's Game of the Year. Microsoft estimated selling 1.5 million copies of Halo 3 at launch, but it would sell 3.3 before the end of the month, and to date, over 8 million worldwide. It was the best-selling game of 2007. So many people were at home playing Halo 3, film studio execs at the time were positive it contributed to poor attendance at movie theaters. The community's addiction was worsened by Halo 3's extra content, with the first map pack update coming right before Christmas. Ah! 
On October 1st, 2007, six days after Halo 3 was released, Bungie Studios announced it was becoming Bungie LLC. Microsoft would retain a minority stake in Halo's property rights, and both parties expressed a desire to keep making and marketing more Halo titles. Microsoft turned to Ensemble Studios, responsible for the Age of Empire series, to reunite Halo with its strategy roots. Ensemble had actually been planning an armchair assault for the 360 controller since 2004 in an effort to circumvent stigmas common to the console RTS. They presented Microsoft with their findings, and it became the next Halo game. Halo Wars launched on February 26, 2009. The campaign was a prequel set 20 years before combat evolved, with CG cutscenes produced by Blur Studios. Military forces were led by Sergeant John Forge, Captain James Cutter, Professor Ellen Anders, and a snarky AI named Serena. The Covenant, appearing in lore six years after they first discovered humans, was the main threat, and a playable opponent in versus modes. Ensemble toyed with the idea of adding the infectious flood to the mix, but it never made it past the concept stage. Hey, this is Forge. We're under heavy fire. Looks like they are setting up defenses. Halo Wars added new elements like base building and troop management, but kept series FPS traits like Spartans taking out Covenant vehicles with their bare hands. Using supplies found or scavenged on the battlefield, players could upgrade buildings, train units, and activate special abilities using a controller and trigger-friendly system built from the ground up for the 360. More advanced units would become available at each tech level. The Covenant were not playable in the single and co-op campaign, but the Arbiter and Clan could be selected in skirmish mode. Halo Wars demo, released just under a month before the full game, set a record for most downloads on Xbox Live at the time. The final version, including the limited collector's edition, was the fastest selling console strategy game of its time, outperforming competitors like Command & Conquer 3. Despite the positive reception, Ensemble Studios proceeded with plans they had announced a year earlier to close their doors. The former heads of Ensemble went on to create Bonfire Studios and Robot Entertainment. Robot agreed to continue support for Halo Wars with two DLC packages of more modes, maps, and achievements. Spirit of Fire, this is Forge. Area clear. In 2006, Peter Jackson announced his game development company, Wingnut Interactive, was creating an episodic Halo game called Chronicles. Unfortunately, due to job layoffs in January of 2009, the project had to be cancelled. In 2007, Bungie had begun working on a prequel to the original Halo, leaving the opportunity for Chronicles crew to finish something smaller in the meantime, a project producer Chris Creamer called a mini-campaign. It debuted in September of 08 on Bungie's website, and showed up at Tokyo Game Show in October as Halo 3 Recon. Actors suited up in battle armor again for the trailer campaign, and by its final unveiling at E3 a year later, Recon had blown up from just an expansion to a complete series sequel. Halo 3 ODST dropped on September 22, 2009. Officially beginning development in March of 2008, it was the first Bungie product finished in less than three years. The name was changed to something Bungie felt was a more straightforward description of the soldier protagonists, the Orbital Drop Shock Troopers. The disc did not require Halo 3 to play, and came packaged with every Halo 3 multiplayer map released so far. The cast reunited Firefly co-stars Nathan Fillion, Adam Baldwin, and Alan Tudyk, along with Battlestar Galactica babe Trisha Helfer, and Nathan Drake's better half, Nolan North. Alive or dead, we're pulling them out. 
You hear me? ODSTs were not Spartans. They had a stamina system instead of Master Chief's recharging health meter, and weren't as agile or resilient. The campaign, which supported up to four players, involved recovering a divided squad through tactical exploration and combat flashbacks. The Halo 3 multiplayer grab bag had three additional maps, and the feature list included Firefight, a new survivalist option inspired by Gears of War 2's Horde mode. Halo 3 ODST was unsurprisingly a top-selling Xbox 360 game. 2.5 million copies flew off the shelves in two weeks, and over 3 million were gone by November, ranking it among the 10 best-selling games of the year. Those that found fault in Bungie's latest felt it was not enough game for the asking price and likened it to an expansion pack. ODST was also overshadowed by Bungie's announcement of Halo Reach at E3, three months before ODST's release. Since 2007, Bungie had actually been working on two games, the second led by creative director Marcus Lido and design lead Christian Allen. Looking to further the fight, they wanted to explore chapters of Halo left untouched and eventually settled on a prequel to Combat Evolved based on a 2001 novel by Eric Nyland called Halo The Fall of Reach. The plan was to import elements from Halo 3 and update them, but new tech led to new ideas and much of it was built from scratch. It would be the last Halo game made by Bungie Studios. Halo Reach was released on September 14, 2010. The central hero was Noble Six, a male or female Spartan who, like the Chief, kept the visor on at all times. As a prequel, the ending of the game had been spoiled nine years earlier, so the ten missions focused more as a tragic bridge to the fateful jump that started Combat Evolved. As Spartans, the tiptoeing from ODST was no longer required and replaced with proper running and gunning. The campaign was available for four, and the squad was full of Spartans. Players selected their name, sex, and armor color, and that style carried over into multiplayer. The mission Long Night of Solace launched Noble Six out of the atmosphere for the series' only spaceflight operation to date. Halo 3's power-ups were swapped with permanent armor abilities like jetpacks, and popular modes Firefight and Forge were updated with new maps and features. Halo Reach beat Halo 3's day one release sales, grossing over $200 million in the process. The marketing spared no expense, surpassing the budget for Halo 3. Microsoft amped up the humanity even higher with more live-action shorts like Birth of a Spartan, Deliver Hope, and Remember Reach. As the most recent Halo game released, Reach is being played by thousands of people at this very moment. A series originally too impatient to wait for Xbox Live now had four-player co-op and 16-player skirmishes fed by experience credits and military rank. The competition has now surpassed the story when it comes to the single most defining element of each Halo experience. Oh. 
In part three of our Halo retrospective, we'll focus on the real reason you're still playing Halo, the multiplayer. From LAN parties to hard drive gameplay capture, the sport of Spartan combat has evolved dramatically in just a decade, and every weapon, mode, map pack, and fan movie will be assimilated. And don't miss the opportunity to enter the Halo Fan of the Decade contest at halo.gametrailers.com and become a part of Halo history.